Hi, I'm Fran, a vet at PDSA, and this is Jester. In this short video, we will be talking about how we treat diabetes in dogs. If your dog has been diagnosed with diabetes, they will now need treatment for life. Diabetes can't be cured, but the good news is, as long as you stick to a strict treatment regime, it can be really well managed. Diabetic dogs aren't able to keep their blood sugars at a normal level, so this is the main aim of treatment, to get their sugars into a normal range and keep them there. We do this by insulin injections, controlling their diet and controlling their exercise. I will now talk you through each of these one by one. Insulin is normally produced by the body to lower blood sugar after eating. Diabetic dogs aren't able to produce insulin themselves, so after they've eaten their blood sugars get very high. So, instead, you will need to give your dog insulin by injecting them twice daily, every day, at meal times. And this will need to be the routine for the rest of your dog's life. It's important that insulin injections are given every 12 hours at set times. So for example, 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. or perhaps if it suits you better, 10 a.m. and 10 p.m. The most important thing is that they're 12 hours apart and at the same time every day. Your vet or vet nurse will show you how to inject your dog and tell you how much insulin to give. The injections to go just under your dog's skin, usually at the back of their neck. You may find it helpful to watch our short video on how to inject your diabetic dog with insulin. After your dog has eaten, their blood sugar will rise. To make sure that this rise is controlled, diabetic dogs need to be fed the same amount of the same food at the same times every day. This means that we know how high their blood sugar will go every time they're fed and that we're injecting exactly the right amount of insulin to bring it down to a safe level. If your dog eats more than usual, their blood sugar may go too high and if your dog eats less than usual, their blood sugar may go dangerously low after their insulin injection. For this reason, it's a good idea to weigh out your dog's food so you know exactly how much you're giving them for every meal and never give them any food or treats in between meals. Extra food can be really dangerous for diabetic dogs, so instead use lots of fuss and play as rewards. Your dog's meals need to be given at the same time as their insulin injections, so every 12 hours. This might be quite a change in routine for you and your dog and may take some time to get used to. But don't worry, with some patience you will both set into your routine just fine. You can feed them just before their insulin injection, just after it, or if your dog doesn't mind you could inject them whilst they're eating. Any of these are fine as long as it's a routine you and your dog can happily stick to. There are certain foods that are better for diabetic dogs, so speak to your vet about which food is best for your dog. This may surprise you, but exercise lowers blood sugar, so to make sure we control how much it comes down, it's important that we keep walks the same each day. This way that we know the exercise that they do is okay in relation to how much we're feeding them and how much insulin they get. And it's likely that their blood sugar will stay at a safe level throughout the day. If, for example, you were to give your dog a much longer walk on the weekend, their blood sugar might drop dangerously low. If you want to increase or decrease the amount your dog exercises, that's okay, but you need to do it gradually, making sure to keep an eye out for any sign that their diabetes is changing. You might be wondering why you need to be so strict about injections, food and exercise, and it's because these factors all affect your dog's blood sugar level. And to keep diabetes well controlled requires a fine balance between them all. So what if I make a mistake? This is a question I get regularly asked by owners because understandably, caring for a diabetic dog can feel quite worrying at the start. So let's talk about what could go wrong. You might accidentally inject too much insulin or perhaps not enough insulin, or some might squirt out when you're injecting. Your dog might not eat all of their food one day. They might steal some on the next, or they might even vomit their meal up after they've eaten. So what should you do in those situations? The answer is always speak to your vet. If you're worried, keep calm, give your vet practice a ring and tell them what's happened. Managing a diabetic dog takes teamwork and your vet practice will always be on the end of the phone to help you and advise you. It's extremely important to keep an eye out for low blood sugar in diabetic dogs. It's an emergency and can quite quickly lead to a diabetic coma which can be fatal. You may hear it being referred to as hypoglycemia or a hypo. Low blood sugar is most likely to develop if your dog's blood sugars have been sent down by too much insulin, too much exercise or too little food. 
If your dog is suffering from low blood sugar, they may appear unsteady on their feet, a bit like they're drunk. They may seem a bit vacant, twitchy. They might become really hungry, vomit, or they might even collapse and become unresponsive. If you think your dog has low blood sugar, the best thing to do is to rub something very sugary like honey or maple syrup into their gums and take them straight to the vet. It's a good idea to carry a small sachet of something high in sugar everywhere you go with your diabetic dog. Insulin is most effective six to eight hours after it's been injected. So this is when your dog is most at risk of showing symptoms of low blood sugar. If you forget to give your dog one of their insulin injections, don't ever give them an extra injection halfway through the day or extra insulin at their next one. This could lead to dangerously low blood sugars. Wait until their next insulin is due and give them their normal dose. It won't kill your dog to have slightly high blood sugar for 12 hours, but it could kill them if they go too low. If you're worried about what to do at any point, give your vet a call for advice. Insulin, feeding and exercise are the three most important ways to manage diabetic dogs. But there are a couple of other things that you can do to improve their blood sugar control. Have them neutered. Hormones can affect diabetes, so it's best to have your diabetic dog spayed or castrated. Keep them slim. Diabetic dogs are much easier to keep well controlled if they are a healthy weight. Ask your vet whether they think your dog is in good shape or if there's room for improvement. So, in summary, treating a diabetic dog is all about sticking to a routine, being very strict about how much they eat and exercise and making sure that they have their insulin injections at the right time every day. There is no doubt that this is a huge commitment, but if you're able to manage it, it's likely that your dog will live a long, happy life. Managing a diabetic dog can be daunting to begin with. Call your vet for help and advice if you're unsure about anything relating to your dog's diabetes.